on our street. I know. <laughs> I know you do, right? I was like, this car doesn't look bad. Oh! Oh, come get it. I spot yeah, bacon. Running, right? running, 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 running. Hey, Sarge, you want it, man? Yeah, man. All right, cool. That's cool. Hey! Yo, wow. <laughs> With classes ending in Evanston and another basketball season complete, it's time for a tradition started by Northwestern head coach Chris Collins. The annual team barbecue is the best way to celebrate his team's success last season an opportunity to reminisce, and for some, say a final farewell. We always, we have a tradition now of just doing something to finish the year, that it's just us, you know, where we can enjoy each other, especially and celebrate the seniors. You know, these two guys are gonna be moving on, the senior manager is gonna be moving on. We always talk about how every journey with each team ends because when these guys move on, it'll be a different team. You know, you guys will be different. We'll have new guys coming in, new managers coming in, and it won't be the same. So this is kind of the last night for us to celebrate the year. And everybody that's here played a part in making this year happen. And obviously it was a really special year. Coach Collins' team had good reason to celebrate that night, coming off the school's first ever NCAA tournament appearance. Now, the number eight seed, Colin. And they didn't stop there. The Wildcats took advantage of the opportunity, earning an opening round victory over Vanderbilt. With a memorable postseason behind them, Collins addresses the team and sends them into the summer offseason with a decisive mission. Enjoy your time off away from here. You know, it's a, it's a great time to, to get yourself geared up. You guys know what the journey's like. There's ups, there's downs. You got to kind of steady the waters, but it's a big investment. So when you come back, be in shape, be refreshed, and be ready, be ready to get to work. All right, Any, anybody else have anything to say? All right, all right, let's get together. Together on three, one, two, three. Yeah. All right, guys, good summer. Right now, it's not looking too good. That's all right, though. Once we win this SB, we'll be good. Some players spent their off-season in style. In July, five of the Wildcats were invited to ESPN's annual awards show in Los Angeles. Thoughts? No, I don't like that. The Wildcats were nominated for the best play ESPY for Derek Pardon's game-winning basket against Michigan back in March. The players weren't the only ones staying busy during the offseason. Their head coach made his way to Wrigley Field to take part in one of the oldest traditions in baseball. Four is one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Let's go, folks! As the new season quickly approaches, the Wildcats have one important off-season task still to complete. With this year's team, we are actually going to have four captains. 
So I'm going to announce right now the captains of the 2017-2018 Northwestern basketball team. So when I call your name, I uh, want you guys to come up. Uh, the first captain that's been voted on by the program uh, is going to be Scotty Lindsay. The second captain that's been voted on is Bryant McIntosh. The third captain that's been voted on is Vic Law. And the fourth captain of this year's team will be Derek Pardon. One of the new captains, Bryant McIntosh, heads into the season having already set the program's all-time assist record. But the Indiana native doesn't want to just rest on his previous accomplishments. What does the game of basketball mean to you? The game of basketball is just the place where I can find peace, uh, where the world around me can be really busy and just having it allows me to to almost stay sane with everything else going on in, in life. In Indiana, you grow up, you know, wanting a couple things. You want to win a state championship. You want to play for the Indiana All-Star team. And you want to win Mr. Basketball. And I was able to accomplish two of those, and one of them I accomplished twice. In recruiting Bryant, you, you could see that he had all the things it took to be a really good player. You know, the thing that I loved about him was he was always a winner. If you look at his situations that he was in, high school, AAU, he was consumed by winning. He always made others better, and he was very talented. Me going all in, it kind of started um, on my first visit here. It was August 10th of 2013. We got to kind of see Coach Collins' vision, what he had planned for me, how he envisioned using me and to his system. He and I developed an amazing relationship in recruiting. There was a depth to our relationship. We, we, right away, we just clicked. So I go home and then uh, about a month later, we have my in-home visit with Coach Collins. To be able to culminate with his whole family there uh, was a day I'll never forget. I mean, it was a, a very emotional day because we knew how important to our program it was to, to get someone of Bryant's caliber to, to join and be at the forefront of what we were trying to do with our program. You know, Coach Collins was kind of giving me his spiel of, you know, we need people to be all in. And my grandma on the way home from our previous visit, she had talked to me about, you know, if you commit there, you can you can use a chip, like a poker chip. So I wrote in, wrote on the chip, all, and then with an N in purple. And then I wrote the date on the back, and I did two of them. And I put the chips on the table and slid them. I'll never forget September 9th. 2013, it was the day Brian McIntosh decided to be all in with Northwestern basketball. We had like a little like poker set in my parents' rooms. So I kind of walked back there with my dad and I was like, I think I'm going to commit. And he said, okay. When he came to visit in the summer, uh, we used the phrase with him. Uh, that our poker chips were all in on him. Uh, he was the guy that we wanted, that floor leader that could be a connection uh, with the coaching staff and, and help lead us into the future of our program. So I wrote on the chip, all, and then with an N in purple. And then I wrote the date on the back, and I did two of them. Coach Collins was kind of giving me his spiel of, you know, we need people to be all in. And I said, I'm with you, coach and I put the chips on the table and slid them. And he was like kind of confused and he picks it up and looks at it and he's like, is this you committing? And I'm like, yeah, coach, like I'm all in. And that was the day uh, that Brian in his living room at the dinner table let me know that he wanted to be a part of what we were building. A lot of what I want to accomplish is, is team-based really. You know, I don't really look at individual accolades and if you work hard, your team successful, then everything else will take care of itself and that's kind of how I've always played and, and thought of it. Forget about the assists, forget about the points. Uh, it's about the winning and it's about the building of the program that I know makes him the proudest. 
questioning, did I make the right decision? Am I ready for this? Should I really be playing at this level? All the way to the experience of the NCAA tournament. And it's just kind of crazy the amount of ups and downs, the peaks and valleys you go through. But you know, ultimately, I think it's all paid off for everyone. We just want to go out with uh, an unbelievable senior season and, and you know, a big stamp to an amazing legacy that he's left on this program. Ready for his final season, McIntosh gathers with the rest of his teammates on campus less than 24 hours before their first official practice. Because of the way the schedule is this year, there are many more games in a much shorter period of time. We have a, we have a week that early in the season where we have four games in eight days. We have four weeks in the season in the conference where we have three conference games in one week. There are now games on Mondays. There are now games on Fridays. Our conference, there are no buys in the conference season. Once you get to the conference, there are no buys. You play at least twice a week. That's why we gotta, we gotta be in unbelievable shape. We gotta get our rest. We're gonna need depth. We need guys to, everyone to raise their level so that everybody can help us. It's, it's a different year than it's ever been. But I think we're equipped for it because of the way guys have worked and we have a lot of good players. We're gonna need everybody. What can each of you guys bring to help us be a championship level team? With the first team practice complete, Northwestern basketball is officially in full swing. And that means making a trip to Big Ten Media Day which this year is held at Madison Square Garden in New York City. That looks real good. Let me go crazy on this tonight. Interesting challenge this year with Wall Shrine Arena being renovated. You're playing your games at Allstate Arena, which for those who don't know is maybe 30 or 40 minutes from campus. What are the unique challenges that you need to confront this year? Yeah, I, th I think for us it's just a no excuse mentality. We're going to make Allstate our home. Is it is it on campus? It is, is it Wall Shrine? No. But this is what it is, and, and we got to make it a great home court because winning at home is important in the conference. And we're going to do everything in our power to to do that this year, and, and, and hopefully our fans will follow suit and come support this team. November has come and gone, and Big Ten season has arrived early. With only half of their non-conference schedule complete, tonight the Wildcats will host in-state rival Illinois. Game days start early. The team travels by bus to their hotel in Rosemont, where they will eat, rest, and prepare for their upcoming match against Illinois. strong with the ball the whole night. You have to meet catches. You gotta meet passes. You gotta be strong for your entries. You gotta catch and face strong. If they wanna jam you, rip them and get hand checks. Rip them and get hand checks. You gotta be strong. We gotta be strong on D. Not get driven, warrior drill. Not get driven, play with our bodies, not our hands. Move our feet. We have to have strong looks. We have to have strong looks. We can't look like little kids. We gotta look like men. We have to have strong huddles, okay? We have to have strong communication. You have to talk all night, okay? Guys, tonight is about us being a team. Yes, sir. 
tonight is about us being men. Tonight is about us fighting. Tonight is about us winning. And tonight is about the name on the front of our jersey. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It is the Big Ten opener for the Wildcats, even though it, the calendar reads December 1st, the earliest conference opener in Northwestern history, and both teams need a win. Cats in their home whites, Illinois in their traveling orange uniforms. Big crowd on hand here at Allstate Arena, and we're ready to go. The law, nice catch, sends it out to Falzone, now he'll kick it back to Law. Left pocket three. Good. Vic Law, three-pointer. Cats lead 3 nothing. McIntosh, the floater. God, that's good. Yeah, that's just good. That's not an easy shot. Back to Law. Bobbles, catches, drives to the basket, and throws it down with a right hand. Vic Law with a dunk. Pats it within two, 13-11. You know, you know. Zone to the elbow, out to McIntosh, three ball, got it! A sure thing the moment it left his hands. Low block, all-star, muscles in, put it up on the rim and scores. Illinois back in front. Here's McIntosh with five, with four, to foul zone. Left corner, three, no good. And Illinois takes a four-point lead to the locker room at halftime. Big Ten games aren't easy. Everybody's good. Yep. You gotta right. dig in, you gotta fight. And you can't play dumb. Dumb mistakes get you beat. You gotta play smart. If a guy gets you in the post, you can't just fall down and let him play it in. You gotta body up. I thought we said we weren't gonna get pumped. Right. And the second half underway from Allstate Arena. The Wildcats will have the ball first to start the second half. Touch pass to McIntosh, drives in, floater in the lane. Got it! And a foul. It danced on the rim and fell in. Here's McIntosh lobbing. Nice catch by Park. He slams it down with two hands. 51 all. Low block Pardon out to McIntosh. Three ball. Good! Brian McIntosh. Skelly driving back door to Scotty Lindsay for the dunk and the Cats lead. 326 to go. Out to Law, a three in the air, good! Cats lead it, 63-61. Lucas, now All-Star in traffic, scoops it up, scores. McIntosh with six. McIntosh going, lost it. Deflected, Laurent Black lets it go from half court. Short, and we play on. And we'll head to overtime here at All-State Arena on this Friday night. Tied at 63. Now Lindsey, long three, got it! Scotty and Lindsey from Schaumburg and the Wildcats lead at 66-64. Lucas now against Ash, driving in, put it up, he scores, got to the basket. Isaiah Brown, guarded by Williams, now taken on the switch by Black. He'll shoot over him, got Holy it. Long God. deuce. Isaiah Brown over Laron Black, 68-66. Lucas driving. Lucas in the lane, spinning, shooting, blocked by Point. Derek Point with his fourth block shot of the night. And the Cardiac Cats win in overtime. You guys refuse to lose that game. We're 1-0 in the 18 round fight. <clears throat> Doesn't matter how you do it. We're, we're one and oh, okay? Yep. Okay, great job. <laughs> proud of you guys. We're gonna respond. Family on three, one, two, three. Hey. After splitting their first two conference games, the Wildcats continued through non-conference play, collecting five more wins to bring their season total to 10. The largest Margin of victory in Northwestern Wildcat history here tonight, 96-31.
And for the second game in a row, they win decisively. And run their winning streak here at home to four in a row. And the Wildcats survive here at Windrust Arena for their first road win of the year. As the calendar flips to 2018, Northwestern finds itself with a tough road ahead. Coach Chris Collins and his veteran-filled roster have 15 conference games remaining to find a few signature wins and return the Wildcats to the postseason.